he's going to be able to have his disposal at Jackson State and Dion's going to take care yeah. of him on that front. Um, I don't know, like what what popped for you originally with him? Like, did you know that this kid's going to be special and the number one kid in the in the in his class? Well, let me let me, you know, preface this by saying, you know, like you said, I, I've coached a lot of, you know, in my career, some of the best receivers mm-hmm. that's ever played in the state of Georgia. And, and some of the best players. He is a combination of all of them, regardless of position, rolled into one kid. You know, and I'd heard, you know, when I first came over, I heard a lot about this kid, this Travis Hunter kid, um, and, you know, freaky athlete and all that kind of thing. And then when I actually put eyes on him, I said, no way. Not, <laughs> you know, his junior year, he was, you know, he was skinny, you know, he, not that he swole all up, but he, he was really skinny. Mm-hmm. And then the first practice, I knew. I mean, he is a, like I said, a combination of all the great, you know, the best players that I've coached, the best players I've seen. He, you know, what separates him is how much film he watches. All right. That's huh. the little things that people don't realize that the things he does that's God given is is off the charts. But a lot of times guys that have that type of talent, you know, kind of relax and just, you know, use that talent and, you know, kind of lazy or whatnot because they know they can turn it on, whatever. He studies film. You know, again, like some of the best players I ever coached, like, again, A.J. Johnson still in the league right now with the Broncos. He used to study film right and left, um, you know, more than any other kid. And then, you know, but Travis probably watching more than him. Hmm. You tell, and he's, and then you got to think, put that in perspective, too. He's watching it from two different points of view. He's watching from as a DB and he's watching it as a receiver. Mm-hmm. So, you know, most everybody else is watching it, you know, for whatever their singular position is and he's watching it going two ways so he knew exactly what the other offense was doing and he knew what the defense <laughs> was trying to do against him so i mean he's just a he's a rare rare breed of athlete because and he you know started point guard on the basketball team um you know anytime we did running and conditioning out there you know we've got we had some fast kids didn't matter who the fastest kid was supposed to be if they went against Travis, Travis would, you know, play with him for a while. And then before he got to the finish line, kick in this six gear that he has and win because, you know, he is a competitor. He didn't want to lose at anything. And in practice, you know, he makes all these spectacular plays in the games that everybody goes crazy about. But I promise you, he made those kind of plays plus things you guys never saw at practice every day. And that's, you know, being, you know, old school kind of guy, I'm, you know, I'm big on, you know, catch the ball with two hands and all this kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. he broke me from harping on that because he would practice all the one handed catches. Hmm. And, and at first I'm like, you know, use two hands, you know, by <laughs> all the things I've said over the years, but then he was making these catches again. It was the first game junior year, you know, two years ago against Carrollton in the Corky Kale, he makes a one handed catch across the middle that you had to watch back on, you know, the on huddle on the film the next, you know, day just to appreciate how good a catch it was. And then I learned, hey, that's what he's doing at practice. So it's just like free throws in basketball. You know, you practice it and you know, then when you get in the game, you expect to make it. So he was, you know, making all these catches at practice and, and it showed in the game. Man. And it's, you know, if he dropped one at practice, I quit, you know, just harping him because he's practicing what he's gonna do in the game and he made them all in the game. And it's like I said, he's, he's just a freak, freak athlete. How was that to coach, though, when you have a – because football is very different than basketball, and it's it's so much more of a team game. People like to harp on the quarterback and like to harp on wins and losses on how a quarterback played. And generally speaking, that's not the case for how a lot of games go is what happened with the quarterback. Um, but with Travis, you don't see this kind of superstar like this, his size at this level – and just the way he plays, like there's just not many guys like that who who pop and just are this special type of all purpose guy, um, especially in Georgia. Um, yeah. But was that hard? Was, did that make it harder to coach? Was he it was it easier to coach? Was it one of those things where it's like we got to we got to adjust our scheme a little bit because he just does stuff that like we just we have to figure this out. We have to unlock what he is at, at, athletically because he's just. He's just kind of a freak of nature <laughs> with our team. And we just, we have to maximize this. What he, what he did. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, it takes, you know, it, it does take a little bit of different style of coaching, but you, mm-hmm. know, you know, what we do offensively, you know, he's like the cheat code for unlocking the <laughs> offense because, you know, everything I've ever done, 
you know, you know, going back to the Gainesville days was trying to find matchups to exploit on the defense. And Travis can exploit any defense in any matchup. So, you know, he was, you know, the challenge was trying to, you know, figure out how to more so get everybody else going because he was always going to have the matchup. Now you you got teams that were double teaming, which means now the matchup is finding one of the other guys matched up against a lesser guy and exploiting that. So, you know, this past year, even though he was hurt for, you know, you know, over a month, you know, he still, you know, he had 87 catches. Ethan Davis had 70 something catches. Uh, Cam Pedro had 60 something catches. So it spread all out because, you know, and even the year before we had, you know, at 137 something catches, but, you know, the next <laughs> guy had 60 or 72. So, you know, he's going to always, you know, 99% of the time win his matchup. But when they're putting two and three guys on him, we got, we had other guys that could really, really hurt you. So it's, you know, it was, it was fun game planning because again, it was, you know, you, you're always in attack mode, but with, with him and the other weapons that we did have, you know, it was like, you know, pick your poison on how you really want to, 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 you know, hurt a defense. What, uh, when his decision, he obviously shocked a lot of folks by, uh, by not going to Florida state and going to Jackson state the last moment. Did that surprise you at all that he made that call? <laughs> it surprised me a lot. Okay. Um, because I mean, it, really he didn't tell any of us. Cause I, I, I actually mm -hmm. had, uh, called him, texted him the night before. Mm -hmm. Asked him if he needed anything for the next day. Was he good? You know, sign a day. And, you know, he texted me back. Yeah, I'm good. You know, I'm just going to wake <laughs> up. And he said, I'm going, I'm just going to wake up and, uh, and sign. And I'm thinking, all right, cool. All right. Now mm -hmm. I'm in class at this time, the next, you know, signing day. And, you know, some people, as soon as they wake up, like you said, he's going to do, they sign it, send it in and, you know, the school has it. So it's nine o'clock. I get a text from Florida State, you know, hey, you know, we hadn't got anything yet. Have you heard from him? I was like, no, <laughs> you know, but he, but, you know, he was, you know, his school day didn't start till like 10 ish because he, he did online stuff and he was, you know, because he was graduating early. Um, 10 o'clock. Hey, have you heard from him? And I'm like, no. And then I'm starting to wonder what's going on too. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, when he's going to do it. And I was like, well, he usually gets here around this time. So he should be here in a little bit. Um, and then these recruiting sites start hitting me up. Hey, what's going on? There's a rumor, you know, he's going to, you know, Jack State. He's going to Georgia. He's going to all these places. I was like, look, just relax. He's not here yet. But at the same time, in the back of my mind, I'm like, this is, you know, it's funny to me because I'm like, all these adults are going crazy about this kid mm -hmm. right now. And I honestly do not know, you know, what's going on. So, you know, when it comes around to that time, he comes in there and I'm like, you know, everybody's going berserk and the Internet's going crazy about, you know, the possibility of him going to Dion or George and everybody. You know, at that point, I'm thinking that he's not going to Florida State because he would have picked them out the gate. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm thinking maybe it's Georgia. Um, and then, when he, you know, when he pulled the hat and said everything. I, I, I really crack up because I'm like, <laughs> this kid has no idea what he just did. The impact mm -hmm. that he made for future athletes, for little kids or whatever, because to be such a high profile, you know, athlete um, and to pick a HBCU, you know, he he kind of makes it where, you know, it's cool. You know, mm -hmm. you don't you can actually, you know, the thing is where, where, you know, over the years, I've always told any kid that played for me, you know, you go where you feel comfortable. Because, you know, your parents are not going to be there for four or five years. Your buddies are not going to be there for four or five years. Wherever you feel comfortable, you know, that's where you go. And I mean, that's and that's what he did. Do you think that will, uh, like you said, he, he may not have known what kind of uh, long term uh, just changes to the recruiting structure he might have just uh, set in motion. Do you think that will be something? Because that is a really cool thing and something that just we haven't seen before. Uh, for the most part, and that could be cool. I mean, you just saw Grambling um, with uh, Hugh Jackson. You have Dion staying at Jackson State because mm -hmm. you know people. Eddie are George at, at, uh, Tennessee, Tennessee State. State. Yeah, um, it it seems like this is kind of where it's going, and it's going in a really cool, positive direction. Do you think we'll start to see more of those? And that's something that you expect uh, coaching um, in the future of like, hey, you're gonna have more kids ask you like, oh. 
can, th- this is cool. Like we can, we can do this. What do you think of this? Should I do this? Do you think that's going to start popping up more? I think it'll become more of an option. I don't mm-hmm. know if it'll be like a landslide of all the top players or do anything like that, but I think it'll be an option for him because, you know, I was out in San Antonio doing the um, Adidas all American game when the four star receiver committed to Jack State mm-hmm. Will Trap. And I'm like, and I'm cracking up again because then all those players where, you know, I'm on there with all these all Americans, they're talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I think what we'll really see is what happens next is, you know, what happens with Travis in mm-hmm. three years. Yeah. All right. So if Travis goes out there and balls and is like and it is a is a first round pick or something like that in the in the NFL draft, really high or something like that, then I think that's when it'll actually really, really um change, you know, the landscape because you know, not only does you know it, would it seem like a, a a fade or a fad or something like that, the fact that he would get to the exact same place that he would have gone to if, if it was Georgia or Florida or State or something like that. That's when I think it'll it would be more of a legit option for some some guys. You know, I think it might you know be kind of cool right now because Travis Hunter did it, but mm-hmm. if, you know, if he goes there and still ends up being um, at the place where he would have been if one of those traditional powers then I don't see why anybody wouldn't, you know, use it as an option. And again, you're still going to have you guys that will go to where they grew up loving. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then you just see that, you know, they'll somebody else might go on, a, like I said, a recruiting trip and fall in love with, you know, whatever school it is and say, this is where I feel at home. Uh, it's hard to say no to Dion. I might just yeah. sign out with Dion if I go. Yeah, that's the thing trip. is, how long will Dion be there? That's, you know, if he, he's signing guy. I mean, no disrespect, but he's he signed with between Travis and that that big time receiver. He signed more four and five stars than a lot of power five schools, you know, by himself. I said at the time where I was like, if I was TCU, I would have just uh, I would have uh, open checkbook. Like when that uh, job opened up with Gary Patterson, I'm like, this is your chance. Like you're in Dallas, you're in Fort Worth, just whatever Dion wants, like whatever Dion wants, just bring him in because. I just I think TCU could be a sleeping giant on that front. I actually think he fits a lot of a lot of blocks for uh, TCU, and they're getting ready to. I mean, the Big Twelve going through a lot of changes with Texas yeah. and Oklahoma leaving. Like there was an opening, and I think they just went the safe route and kind of a kind of a boring route with Sonny Dykes. He'll be fine. I just don't think it's uh I don't think it's one that just. How can I phrase this? I don't think it's one that's gonna change the long term trajectory of TCU football. I think it'll yeah. be good but not the, the Deion Sanders is going to be a home run swing by a bigger program yes. at some point. But from the folks I've talked to and that know Dion pretty well and know um, what he does in that community, he cares. And Dion's yeah. done a lot of stuff for that community and that university that I don't know if it's a sure thing that he leaves anytime soon. He really no. has invested um, heavily. And I think, I mean, if you commit to Travis I, Hunter I, and these I kids, about to say, if, I think he, you know, it's probably understood that he, if he did go somewhere, he, he would wait till after Travis. You know, yep. Left because I don't think he would go through all the effort to get him there to leave him there. You know? Right. So 